the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I'm David Bloomberg. Uh, we have Carolyn Mish as staff support from the city, and Bob Riddle, and Barry Smith, and Elizabeth Silver, and Sarah Northrup. Um, and uh, we'll just ask that uh, each person who addresses the board give your name and, and address. Um, and we'll start by uh, hearing the first application, which is for a special permit um, for a larger and taller ground signed by Consulting and Design LLC, Shell Oil, 506 Pleasant Street, Northampton, map ID 39A-32. Notice that this hearing was published on August 28th and September 4th. Before we start, though, uh, let's decide who's voting on the first application, and maybe we can mix it up. Right. Oh, it's the three. members are here. Okay. 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 Um, I guess there's only an option if we are down a full member of that. So that means the voting members will be uh, Sarah, Barry, me, and Bob. No, uh, Bob, Bob and the oh, Bob's an alternate. So Sarah, Barry, and myself. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll go ahead and hear the first application. From here? Uh, whatever is. Oh, okay. Uh, does everyone have a plan? Yes. Small, the 11 by 17 it's a little easier to look at. Thank you. And that's the same as this Yes, it is. Yeah. It's just, right. 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 Just okay. might be instead of having it. Okay. 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 And your name? My, yes. yes. Uh, for the record, I'm Ron Fortune of Consulting and Design, and I'm an agent for O'Connell Oil, who actually owns an operating facility. Okay. They will lease it. So the uh, sign that we're talking about is a freestanding sign that is located in this southerly portion of the property and hangs over our neighbor's property, who is fine with this uh, proposal. We are we have high tension lines that are along here and. Our shape of the sign, this flag shape, is actually in. This goes into the property. As you see, a kind of a dot on the larger sheet, you can see a gray tone line. Um, I don't know whether the yes, the, the, the small sheet does show the gray tone. That gray tone that's in here. And what is the gray tone? It's this actual sign. Oh, it's the existing sign. Okay, it's a pylon. Flags, the flags into the neighbor's property. Right. We're proposing this sign, which again would flag into, away from the street. The post would be at the same base, flags in. Again, the high tension lines are there. So we can't just put a goal post sign and we can't change the um, foundation base. Uh, these are standard size signs that are offered by the industry. And in representing to you, there are more than, there's the retail gas, which is the shell and the price sign. Then there are the acceptance with the stock and shop illustrated on this for, uh, sign. And then O'Connell Oil is the convenience store <coughs> component. And then Dunkin' Donuts is in there as well. Um, the rule for this zone is that we can only have 80 square feet. Um, we currently have 85. <coughs> the composites that we're showing with an LED price on uh, total 107. And what about the height? And the height we're showing at 23.5. Uh, these measurements were given to me. I did not actually go out and measure them, but that's the what I'm understanding. And the new proposal would be to 26.6. And what's the limit? This three. What's the limit in the zone? Um, this zone? Let's see. I think it's 10 feet. Yeah. Required 10. Yes. Okay. And that that would be into the sidewalk. It would be uh, any trucks that would go in there. That would be a problem for it being that low. Well, we've had other cases uh, north of town on the auto dealerships. And what did we insist on then? Did we allow them to go to 15, or did we insist that they remain at 10? 15, but it's a different district, you know, highway business district, so yeah. 15 feet is the maximum. 15 feet is the maximum there. But even so, they, 
complained bitterly that they wouldn't be able to get their trucks under and other things. Sure, yeah. yeah. But if that flag is going into the property, then there are no trucks going under that, right? It's 19 feet clearance. Yeah, this, this clearance is the, for cars. I mean, there is a tight area to get around here. So have you um, done a sign layout that meets the 80 square foot? Uh, no. There's, is there a grandfathering issue? Yeah, I was wondering that question. No, there's no grandfathering if you're changing the sign. Um, if you're just changing out the panels, you can do that. <coughs> but to comply with a 80 square feet and 10 feet high, uh, we wouldn't be able to put it on our property. But you currently have 23 five, right? No, currently we have 85. No, no I'm not talking about square feet, you, I'm talking about <coughs> Oh, yes. Yes, we have 23 five. Okay. You're proposing to take that down and make it higher? No, I uh, guess. I mean, if it is of the board, my only concern is that clear distance underneath uh, to have it no higher than what's existing. So right now, there's a clearance 1948 to the other side of the higher sign, but we don't know what this clearance is here. Yeah, that's the question. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know what that well, is? Well, uh, this this is this is like four feet. <laughs> Uh, can't it, it's what is the clear, and then this is similar. If this is the scale, this is similar to eight, so you can subtract, so it would be like 11. Can you describe, I was just going to pull up on Google Earth, but this is on the property but inside <coughs> the curb, so people, trucks are actually going on the outside, they're not going to be yeah. going under the sign. They can be, they can get through here as well. There's another driveway curb cut on the other side? And there's this other business that's here. We don't make it a practice to go there, but we're just concerned that our sign does get hit, may get hit. I can't see where you're pointing to, where there's another driveway. Right here, our, our, our neighbor, right in here. I think it's a neighbor. Why couldn't you just block off that access then? Just put a little sort of thing so you can't drive through there. Well, you'd be doing that on the neighbor's it's property. property. Is it the neighbor's property? I mean, it's got to be your property there somewhere. Well, it's it's our shirts. It's, yeah, it's a cute angle. This angle is our actual property. So part of the new sign would be on the neighbor's. And yeah, what, what we're doing is property. getting closer to it being on our property by this design. Who's, who's the neighbor? Who's the, who's the, what's the neighbor's it, Isn't that that long and gray building with... I think, on, I think that's on the other side, if I'm not mistaken. No, I'm sorry, I don't know. It's right by the tank, um, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like it's that mixed-use yeah, mixed yeah. commercial right. building. Yeah. Yeah. There is one on the other side, too, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. where the, yeah. only car, wash, the yeah. car wash and Diva is right. on, that's on the that's north it. side. That's it. So, assuming this uh, is to scale, as it's yeah. marked, the this is approximately 13 feet. Clearance yes, underneath, which is yeah. kind of what I expect. Well, deep is further um, down, I think, isn't it? Just so, yeah. so to get your third, if if you're concerned about clearance, then um, then it's a you know, you give yourself clearance. You're, you're choosing you're choosing this nice big shell symbol um, and prioritizing. The symbols you want and the sizes they are, and if you if this if this layout is in the same direction, so the upper diagram shows the pole going up and then the arm kinking to the left, and uh, so on the drawing this is a view from the north. So if this is a view from the north also using the same base. So this flag would go here. Okay. Because so of the high view, tension lines. This is a view from the south. So it's actually yeah. the flag is actually going the yeah, same direction. They, they want yeah. this to be visible from the side you want. This, this is view from, from north. This is view from so that's just that's confusing um, to have it 
So it, this would be double sided. Yes. So we have the same mm -hmm. thing on both sides. As the existing one is. And the and base it. is in the same location. The pole is essentially in the same location, but the signage is, uh, and the signs are going in away from the street, but it's a different set. Yeah. Okay. And you had a question. I had a question about all of these other pieces that are underneath the sign. You know, stop and shop, the owner's pod, Dunkin' Donut. It's, it's not, oh, I see. These are each almost two feet, right? Yeah. <coughs> so those, those could be how many? I mean, I, I think um, when Gary referred to this earlier, we've had a lot of cases of signs that want to, places that want to be visible from the highway. And we've been pretty consistent about keeping them at 15 feet or less. Mm -hmm. And this is a really sensitive area it, it because it's a, it's, it's a gateway a into town from the south <coughs> that the city has a concept plan to improve and, and an expansion of this magnitude is, is, is clearly contrary to, to, that, direction. to that direction. Um, I don't think you could, can I have a question? You have, there's another, um, there's actually a billboard sign for Shell, but it's not on this property, right? It's off yeah, premises it's over there, and that's on the highway. Yes. And yeah, so that's probably 30, 40 feet tall, I think, already for Shell. Where on the highway um, in relation to, no, I can see this, but where on the highway is it in relation to the station? Is it? Well, you can see it coming over the dike. If you're coming over the dike, it's right here. you're heading north or heading south? No, heading north, okay. so towards the station, there's a tall Shell sign here that's actually off premise. So we're coming this way. Um, Is that grandfathered in? Yeah. You can't do that anymore. No, you can't right? do that anymore. Right. Yeah, so that, and that, I can't see it from here because it, it points to the station right there. Yeah, so you're coming over the dike and the shell sign is there. Also from the highway, you can see it. The visibility on the street really is not that much of an issue here. I mean, we don't, we don't. Not worry about people knowing. We don't need to feel guilty stations. about going to 10 or 15 feet on this sign, right? Because there's this whole other huge thing that. Right. There's also the canopy that has signs. I don't know if you can see that, but you, as you're coming down Pleasant Street, you can see the canopy is really pretty close to the road too. So. And those are. You mean the canopy over the over pumps? The, over, the over the pumps, yeah. Pumps, yeah. I'm not sure. Are any of these signs yeah. illuminated? Yes. Um, are They're they all oh. internally illuminated? And the price sign would be the LED changeable letter for the pricing change. And those are red. And they would uh, meet the illumination standards? Yes, and they're, they're not a flashing light. They're just, again, it's just for changing changing the pricing. It avoids the uh, tasking, getting out in any weather, cold, except for changing the... But the other sign, they're internally illuminated? Yes, correct. And, I mean, again, we've got what lumen standard right that we don't have discretion to waive but that's yeah. presumably you're yeah, aware we of that you yeah. have to comply yeah. comply yes could you live with 15 feet well the design is 16 feet without any post and we would be right into the neighbor property so I mean, I there would be nothing clear underneath. Thing. There doesn't really. I mean, the idea that uh, that it needs to be clear underneath for trucks. Trucks are taller than nine foot eleven. Mm -hmm. So it's not clear for trucks. Well, no, but right now it's twenty. So oh, right now it's nine foot eleven clearance. Yes. Yeah, so so then. Yeah, so if now you, I'm not following. 
Yeah, if you have it's a, not currently a, truck if It's camp. not clear for trucks. Currently, no, current, it's, currently it's no, about it's, 13 feet clear. Oh, it is. Okay. If you look at the, the upper drawing. Yeah, but I mean, the, I'm talking about the proposed. Right. So the proposed uh, the proposed is not going to be clear for trucks. But so why worry about? Yeah, I, mean, okay yeah. with it, so. I mean, there's no reason for it to be yeah. this high except for maximum visibility of the sign. Right, so I'm not sure that there's even a reason to go up to 15 feet. We, I thought we did something similar with the bowling alley sign almost across the street, Carolyn, where they came in looking for a bigger sign. And, do you remember that? Yeah, I don't remember that. I can pull up. And we, and we, and it's that small sign that is much more in uh, consistent with with what the city's mm -hmm. trying to achieve in that district. Mm -hmm. um. But but that's a really good point, Bob or whoever made it. That even as proposed, you only have you have less than ten, ten feet of clearance anyway. So that's inconsistent with the argument that. The whole sign has to be bigger so that trucks can get underneath it to get to the yeah, but we're not the talking, property. We're not, we're not talking the uh, tanker trucks and the big, huge box trucks. Yeah. Uh, we're just the standard three quarter ton pickup that has a rack on it. This would clear. I see. That's, you know, the majority of our. This is um, noting where the curb lines are, uh, the, the vehicles that would pass under it would be going to that neighbor's property. And so the neighbor, K and M Real Estate now, or formerly K and K and M Real Estate, is you say you hear is okay with uh, the sign hanging over their property. And one would presume they would expect to be able to get clearance for people coming onto their property. I guess I'm a little bit confused about the clearance issue at all because um, the curb cuts on the drawing and where the gratiated area is, I mean, it seems to me that people are coming in and turning left, and that's what the top of the building here. And they're coming in. Mm -hmm. But, but if the truck comes in to here, right? Because it's a curb cut, why are they going into the center side at all? They're not. But they're going over here to this property. Well, we don't care about it. Yeah, we do what the neighbor is asking for this relief. One of the questions that uh, questions that Carolyn just raised is could you just flip the whole flag around? No, so the high tension lines that are oh. there are we're, we're having to stay we have, But oh. if you're lower than that, then if it's only ten or fifteen then, feet high, then you can below that. Then point. we're disturbing we're caught in a catch twenty two. That's the point of this and this is what about moving it further north? Then we're into our curb cut. Well, beyond the curb cut, on the other side of the curb cut. There's a, there's, there's a whole long section here of, you know, is there some reason, for example, it couldn't go somewhere right here? Okay, we're into the travel path of these islands. This is, we're, we're a gas station. It's a high throughput facility and travel is um, this was a compromise that we're working with here for it to work for all the scenarios that are particular to that that you site, the height, the neighbor, the angle of our property, etc. And what and and what Stop and Shop and O'Connell and Dunkin' Donuts would all like to like to see. Yeah. <coughs> what is the um, <coughs> what are the dimensions on the very lowest base where? The sign sits, on, you know, the platform. Mm. Uh, I, I really don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know that. That's to remain. I'm Car Carolyn has a question. So your existing shell sign, it says it's 23 feet five inches, and it's under the high tension lines now. But it's, it's the top of the shell. Right, and it's kicked back. And, but then the the price sign projects towards the street and it's slightly lower than that. Yes. It's approximately 17 feet high. The so top of the price sign. If you had a lower so that fits under the current wires. It works. So if you had the total sign is less than 17 feet, 
then it can still flag out towards the street and, and miss not the of the worry buyers. about the potential of pickup trucks. Well, there's also a thing that I think an issue that was relevant to that is it being uh, sort of struck by trucks. The, uh, the allowable square footage is 80 square feet. You're asking for 107, mm -hmm. 27 square feet more than uh, if uh, you were to remove two of those ancillary signs, then you would just about, you'd still be a little bit over the, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the allowable limit. But not much. I mean, by a, a very, very small amount. So. Well, wait, but those are only two feet each. By six foot. They're six feet. Well, we're talking about square footage. Oh, I'm sorry. I sort thought we were thing. talking about height before. No. Well, well, we were talking about height, but you see, this is relevant. That is because if you took away the bottom two ancillary signs, then it. Uh, Sort of helps with the uh, the heightage by what four feet? What are those? Each of those mm -hmm. are yeah. Four feet. Feet. So you'd get you get four extra feet that way. It also pretty much abide by the zoning ordinance. Not for height, for square footage. No, for square footage. Okay. understand that there was a, uh, a discussion and a compromise of, of, uh, of, of what folks would like the sign to be, but uh, we don't see any effort to um, meet zoning. Well, if we could uh, continue so I can get back to my client with coming up with something that's a little bit more in line with what this discussion is, I'd like that privilege. Sure. Like, uh, so you, you could either do that or set some parameters as a condition and then they can put, they can adjust the size to fit that and have whatever names or and then you uh, can lettering play they want. With it as you wish or as they wish. But in any case, I think you understand our concern. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why I suggested. Yeah. I don't know. I have no See what they will come back with. And, you, every board doesn't mind. Mind. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't. I don't mind. But I think that Carolyn was echoing my thoughts, which is that you know, I mean, the limit is ten feet, and when we we haven't had a conversation within our group about whether or not we would increase that and make an exception. But the most we've ever gone to in the last two years has been fifteen feet. So I do think that. When you talk to your client, that the conversation probably ought to be in that direction. But it also is a thing that that's allowed by right, so 15 feet and things. That is where the height really came into the we issue than 15 we feet. We stuck with the maximum height. That in was this the case, it's right 10 there. feet. Mm -hmm. So you know, we would be making an exception in this district yeah, if we went to 15. Yeah. But there's unique circumstances here because of the environment that it's in. The proximity to the neighbor, the angle of the property, and the high tension lines, and the sidewalk. Well, so we don't in interfere with any of those. If I could come back with at least investigating, well, again, what we could do that was closer to the rag, then if the board would entertain that and see what happens at that point. If, if your proposal um, was not. Uh, Increasing the nonconformity. Mm -hmm. Yep. We, you know, here you're going three feet higher, another <coughs> uh, 22 square feet, and uh, so you know everything is. Yep. It's bigger in yes. every direction. Um, so if there's a, okay. an effort to, you know, comply Decrease. first off, then. Then you'd have no trouble at all. Okay, <laughs> I will make that effort to get that message to my client. And you need a motion and a vote to postpone or um, continue it? Yeah, so the next hearing would be um, actually October 9th because September 25th is um, Rosh Hashanah, so we're not meeting. Um, so let me just pull that up. I think it's October 9th. But yeah, that's the check. second Thursday. So it could be, we don't have anything
things so far. Uh, there is a continuation um, of something nobody heard. It was that appeal, right, Olive Street. So I don't know if you want to do it at 5.30 ahead of that one or do it after the appeal. Olive Street was taking a while. When would the next meeting be after that? After October 9th? Would be October 23rd. Uh, I have a conflict. Well, I move that we continue this hearing until October 23rd. At 5.30? At 5.30, yeah. Thank you. Second. 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 Sarah, all in favor? Unanimous. October 23rd at 5.30 here. And so we have an appeal on the 9th? Right. Um, okay, so um, I guess we'll move to the second matter, which is the special permit for a larger canopy and ground science by consulting in Design LLC, CITGO, Gas, 15 Locust Street, or Hampton, Map ID 24A-217. Um, again, notice this hearing was published on, for everyone who wasn't here at 5.30, it was, it was published on August 28th and September 28th. For the record, I'm Ron Fortune, consulting in design, and an agent for Mutual Oil, who supplies the uh, fuel for the product uh, for this site. Uh, Standing sign uh, that's shown on the plan. Uh, first, the uh, site plan showing the location of the price sign and basically a logo sign currently. The existing sign shown as a Z mark and just a fried for a chicken, and then the price sign. The proposal for that sign is to remove all the signs on the post and install the prime mark Sitco and a, basically a LED price sign. <coughs> so this, uh, this, this sign on the existing post, which is eight feet, one inch tall, and uh, sign that's proposed is approximately four, so that would be at a height of 12 feet, one inch. So you're reducing it by a little more than two feet? Yes. And the... And removing and downsizing the square footage from, I believe, 60 square, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. 60 square feet down to uh, 32 square feet. Uh, the issue is that it's a it's in a neighbor business zone and Reducing the overall height from 14.8 to 12.1, and then reducing the overall square footage from 60 square feet to 32 square feet. That's correct. And so we're trying to keep it. That sounds pretty good. We like this one. Uh, and the, the 10 feet is is what zoning requires in the zone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the neighbor business, yes. Mr. Fortin, oh. I, I have a question. It's probably not that relevant, but in this case, 
case, you're suggesting eliminating the <coughs> co advertising signs that are there. And in the other case, you were advocating adding them. Right. And are, are these like tie ins and required to either add or not add? Yeah, this, this can. This is Sitco as a supplier for the gas retail, where the owner on the previous site has this obligation for advertising of its tenants, tenants, and that's and the packages that they have, and that's why you had those add ons. Okay, and those are tenants yeah, that are in the, the building, and yeah. you pay for your gas, you go inside. Yeah, the donuts and, donuts and the convenience store. It's not there now, though, right? Yeah, the yeah they, the, there's oh, the Duncan the and, the, and the other one. There right. is the Duncan on it. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. a price no, a shell. No, no, right now there's the convenience store and the Dunkin' Donuts and the other one on Constant. Oh, yes, right. yes, they exist. They yes. Just one the of them wants Dunkin' Donuts. Donuts. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's right. So they're adding the convenience store to the okay. sign. But no, this, this would be this um, owner's and supplier's choice. That they're okay with this proposal. Right. The there's a large building sign on the mansard, Zmar, at this location, for noting the, the convenience store component. I mean, nobody's. I don't. I think I could speak yeah. generally. Um, yeah. Generically, sure. say no one's gonna have a problem with lowering, uh, reducing the yeah. size. I guess the only question is um, about the lighting. And also this time we have a second sign. We have the canopy letter and not just the Yes, canopy. right. And on this application, it also, pieces. we are including, uh, we were granted through the building process, uh, this word CITGO on each M. The client is asking that we propose the Trimark, which is the logo for um, CITGO, and then a price buy. And one of the one of the things that was pointed out was that because of the, the complexity of the lot, the snow plowing and all, this does get hidden sometimes. This sign. Price pod is the. Um, you're talking you're about the you know, next. Would be the next sheet. next to the word sit on a canopy of price facing, display. So you can see the street. Right. And currently, there is a uh, the word that go on that face. Right. Here's the, we have the existing. Yeah. yeah. And then the third sheet has the proposed try mark just in one place, place facing, right. facing the street. Yes. And that's 15 feet under under side, so we're an 18 foot height. And then again, and this height is no higher than the top of the canopy. And all illumination will be has to conform to right. the yep. covert, city code requirements. Yeah. Um, I had a question about that um, the LED pod, as you call yes, it. Yes. Um, so I think this had come up with Cumberland Farms, and I wanted to know. I think they said that it, in, at night they, there's a dimmer on the LED yeah, that could. Is that standard, yes, or yeah. do you have to there's, set it for that? There's. The flashing this does not have, all right, and this is a moderate intensity, but it does uh, diminish light at night, but it needs to be brighter than that during the day for it to be seen because of just regular Yeah, and that's a pretty much just industry standard. So it's automatically um, dims, or you have to set it? No, it's, on my understanding, it's automatically it's done, whether or not there's a you know, a device that you know, dictates it. You know, so, but I know that that's what does happen. So we could, could we make it a we can make it a requirement. Yeah, so sure. I'm thinking just there are patients thing. across the street in rooms at Cooley Dickens, and if it's glaring at night, we want to be sensitive to that. Right. The LEDs. To me, the, the the red is chosen because it carries like a red sunset. Red carries better than any other light. It spreads more than any other light. It, it, and the Academy of Music ramples me every yeah, time I go by. It's bad. just yeah. too bright. Yeah. And I complain about it. And there are people who live across the street from that. Yes. Too. So so it so it really needs to have an automatic dimmer and and that's really up to the person installing 
the dimmer. There's a little lie on it, and you can't point it out because then it covered with snow. You know, it's that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Um, so the question is exactly uh, which of these is under our jurisdiction? Not, not the ones on the canopy? Right, that's, they've been already. Uh, the two the ends two, of the canopy yes, are already right. permitted. Mm -hmm. It would just be the face of the canopy and then the freestanding sign is proposed. So the face of the canopy is, uh, and the pre both of those are in addition to what is allowed by right, correct? And the face of the canopy is where the LED price display is going to be? Yes. Okay. So I but, think all, that means but it's also on it's the free, also it asked, we're asking for it on the freestanding oh, sign. Right. Which we're allowed, my understanding is we're allowed the freestanding sign. You're, you're changing it so that because it doesn't meet the height requirement, that's also right. part of the spread. Yeah, right. So it's nice that the uh, proposal for the freestanding, the new freestanding sign is smaller, although it is still greater than allowed, therefore the need for the special permit. Right. Right. Okay. And then the, and then the, the LED light up on the canopy. Both, are both of those, is, is the white Sitco with the tri-mark also yes, it's split, split. illuminated? Mm -hmm. But the ones on the ends of the canopy are not no, over there. No. So this one is the white from behind. Yes. That's the, did you say the ends are eliminated or the face facing Elm Street? Is the one proposed street? facing Elm Street is. Um, Plus, it, it's their logo. But it's there's the back mark. Yes. Right. Okay. And is the back is the lighting changing in the canopy at all, or is it no. going to continue what's there? It's, what, it's, it's continuing. I've not instructed to add, you know change over LED, which is a lot of times what happens, but no, okay. not to my knowledge. Because we had a problem with the with the um, when there were lights that were changed in the can canopy outside of permitting, and they were far too they exceeded our light levels, and we had a difficulty. I'm not sure that there's in compliance now. So I just wanted to make sure the canopy, mm -hmm. at least what was in the jurisdiction, um, mm -hmm. despite whether they're changing it out, meets the standard. Um, in terms of the timing on the lights, do we know what the um, business hours are? Oh, no, I do not. It will close. It's not a 24 7 rate. I'm not certain of that. Excuse me. Okay. Do you do that one? Five to eleven. So that's the current operation rate, operating time, and no plan to change it. We have control over the timing, right, of the light inside. Yeah. I believe it's within a half an hour. So we should just ask: Is there anyone here? Uh, who wanted to address this application? This is for the Sitco convenience store on Locust Street across from Philly Dickinson Hospital. Yes. Yeah. I live down uh, Dickinson Street. My only concern with it is just the lighting, also. Um, Can you just state your name and, and sure. address for the record? Uh, Magali Barajas Roman. I live at 10 Dickinson Street. And you just want to express your concern. So it um, sounds sort of like a, along the lines of what we're saying. You know, the, the lighting scene, not having seen the plan, I had seen, mm -hmm. I got a special notice in the mail, but uh, the lighting is just a concern, especially the LEDs. They are very bright, and uh, no, other, so no other businesses on that Locust Street block have LEDs or any sort of, you know, neon sign or anything like that. So I just, I'm just concerned with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And anyone else? My name is Catherine McKeon, and I live adjacent to the Z Mart complex. And I'm, I was also concerned about light and brightness concerns. But the lights in that complex are already quite bright, and I didn't uh -huh. want them to get bright. Okay, thank you. One, uh, just oh, any, uh, any, any. I'll give you a, a chance, but anyone else here to address this application? Uh, 
Yes, I also live on Dickinson Street. Um, my name is uh, Elizabeth Barajas Roman. I'm also living on Dickinson Street. And I'm just concerned about the lights as well. Um, they are very bright. Um, as uh, as my colleague mentioned, there are no other um, uh, businesses on that street with kind of neon lighting or anything like that. It's a very residential area. It's across from the park. Um, the, the hospital is along that way, but it, it, once you get into the neighborhood, it's very um, residential. So, so Dickinson is behind where we it's, are? It's right across, basically. Yeah, so it, um, so yeah, it's, it's just also the, yeah, the tone the of the house. neighborhood as well. Right okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Across the street. Yes. This, yeah, you want to okay. And, and uh, one of the comment, to, maybe yes. Um, my point, thank you, uh, was that we are reducing that freestanding sign that's the closest to that intersection by almost 30 square feet. Mm -hmm. We're actually reducing, or asking that we reduce that. Yeah. But you're adding an LED price display to that. That's sign. correct. It's smaller, yes. but it's going to be lit up with more with lumens. And then the other one is facing the hospital directly. Yes. Okay. Is there some reason it can't be dimmed even when it's still open for business? Well, you can have a time so it goes off half hour or an hour after the close of business, and then that so that means the rest of the night after eleven or twelve, it would be off. Well, but you're talking about between <coughs> the dark. And Help me with the word dim then, because LED dim to me dim. is not off. Right. Dim is right. So right. It's there's a difference between dim and off. And I, my question is, if you're saying dim, do you mean dim or do you mean off? And if it's dim, then is there some reason it couldn't be dimmed as it's getting while the business is still open, but it's still you know, late. Well, I think even you were saying that it's not necessary, it, it's necessary to be brighter during the day because of ambient light. Right. And it's not necessary to be as bright at That's night, right. even when the business is open, because it's darker out and you don't, and I think what you're saying. Yes. And the dis industry has noted that the, the higher intensity lights, they glare and melt together almost, right. you know, they, they flare out almost, and that doesn't work. You can't see it, so it's not a or good it's thing like for the industry. Yeah, it's too right. bright, and so they, they're but very sensitive. To but this. is there a way that we seen. can quantify a dimmer? Well, I mean, you maybe I don't know a percentage. I don't know if that's possible. Fifty well, percent of the, the daylight. The ones I have power installed. Um, this is on some uh, internally LED lit. Start monument signs on the US campus. They have, uh, there's uh, a sensor that sees okay, it's bright out, and therefore the lights inside have to be brighter or else the image disappears. Um, and then if it's, but if it's a darker day, then, or, and then at dusk, it sees okay the lights don't need to be as bright because they stand out much better in the dark. So they actually dim at night and then off is a completely different switch. That's a, that's a timer. It's switch. already pre-programmed is well, what you're saying, sort of to go to a certain level based on the ambient light. Yes. If the canopy is already got lights that we can't do anything about because it's been decided, right? Sure we could. No, the canopy lights need to meet the zoning requirements so they you can and they're coming for a sign so you can reiterate that if they're too bright now they need to be changed out and comply with the ordinance. I guess my question is and, and you know and I, I do appreciate the reduction in size but my question is is there some reason that needs to be good at all if they already have other lights. Well I think it's the price sign it's it's electronic lettering for the and it's I mean that's yeah. short of that then they would have a backlit and they'd go in and hand replace right. the price sign so this is the new technology instead of having to go up with little yeah. labels if we're talking about the LED price yeah, display it's if it's not lit it's off and not visible but I but you might be talking about the rest of the canopy we can control the downlighting shielding the lights that are there. Um, 
and I believe that that was done for along the back of for that street on this property. Um, as far as the LED lighting of the price, um, someone has to get out there and replace these letters. And one instance that we've had is somebody did get hurt. It seems hard to believe, but they, you know, during the winter, those things, if they come down off that suction cup, they can use some damage. And that is one instance that, I mean, this is a costly endeavor to do this, but it's, and it's not for just for that reason that we're doing that. It is an easy thing to change rather than have someone go out there and change for pricing. And right. that is the, and this is the standard yeah. almost for when, where we're going in the, in the any yeah. industry. But Elizabeth, is that what you were suggesting that considering instead of using LED displays for the pricing to sort of go back to the unlit or inter back? Yeah, I, I, I think it's a question. I mean, I'm not sure if it is realistic. I, I'm just incredibly sensitive to the neighborhood and, you know, a residential neighborhood. And if the business is open until 11 o'clock at night, you know what that means. And that's a lot of light late. Um, and even if it's, any, especially if it's another half hour beyond that. So, um, I mean, you know, I, I, but, but if we could quantify a restriction in our decision, like, a reduction at or below 50 percent of the of course I don't know I don't know what that means but I, I, <laughs> that's the problem yeah. maybe maybe you know Sarah from experience yeah, but, but I'd have to see the specs of the actual right. piece of equipment mm -hmm. the electrical spec of it to to really be able to tell mm -hmm. and uh, and that's something maybe we look at being a little more specific in the ray but around these signs because they're Coming ubiquitous, uh, but for this application under our existing zoning, um, as long as he's complying with our existing zoning, the question is: Are we okay with this freestanding sign uh, in combination with this one up on the canopy? With the dimmer as presented, that it would automatically, it's automatically going to dim after all the LEDs dark. dim automatically with permanent light, and the the rest of the signage all goes off at closing. I don't I don't really see any problem with this application the way it's coming to us. So the. As the proposal is, does the proposal speak to time? I didn't, I didn't see that. I don't think so. No, and I, wasn't, I didn't notice something about it automatically dimming. Yeah, that's that in the application? No, that just as part of the Oh, as, as the, yeah, yeah, the, as as well the in presentation. That is the industry. Yeah. So maybe we could address those points. We could, we could have a, a, a time when it has to be turned off, yeah. basically after closing, and so that it wouldn't be on, on all night long. And, and then after dusk, a requirement that the, the, dim, the, the uh, display, the, the lighting level be dimmed. Right. I have concerns on both ends of the day because in the winter, 5 a.m., it's dark. And if all of a sudden these lights are coming on, you know, at 5 a.m., when the business opens. Um, They'd be coming on at 5 a.m., but not at their full intensity. Because it's so dark. The ambient light. It would be the they same as what they look like at 10.30 p.m., I guess. That's true. They're coming on at 5. Well, do we feel like we have enough information to close the public hearing? We're done. Uh, is, is there any, does anyone else have any comments from the public on this application? I don't see any others. Move we close the public hearing. Yes. All in favor of this unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Well we're gonna we're gonna you should stay for a discussion. Yeah, no, I'm sure. um, so uh, are we is anyone ready to propose a motion or do we need to talk about these details about dimming and timing and a little bit more? Well, it's, 
seems like the, uh, the application is, as proposed is good. We're just adding a couple conditions. Mm -hmm. Like, let's bring the existing canopy lighting into compliance. Yeah, that's critical. And because that's a non starter, you can't. And, really and that should improve the situation right off the bat yeah. in terms of excessive lighting. And if, and if someone's going to go and check what the lumens are at the property line or impacting the neighborhood, you, you can't measure the proposed lighting with the existing condition. And as a result of that, my proposal would be that there be a review after a period of time, or six months after the winter, and see where we are um, to check on the lighting. The, the building commissioner would always, I mean, it would always, if you have the conditions and they, he would check to make sure that there's compliance and if the lights get switched out again, then there's still the record that the conditions stand, they have to comply with the lighting and that the, you know, if you'd go with the condition and they'd be turned off a half hour after close. Then it becomes um, an enforcement issue. Yeah. Uh, is there a mechanism? I know for some permits, well, it used to be with the home occupation, they'd had to come back, but right. if there were complaints, those complaints would go to the building inspector and he would investigate possible enforcement action. Is that, does that make people comfortable enough? It does me. You know, I think the neighbors are going to be happier with the proposed condition. Um, we don't but that's the residential neighborhood, the other impacted property would be the hospital. And we don't know what they think of it. But you haven't ever seen have, it, so no correspondence yeah, to your office. They've been notified and yes. they are trees and et cetera, so. Right. So, so what other, you were starting to list conditions. One was that off the bat there has to be, the existing condition has to be brought into compliance mm -hmm. with the, the lighting ordinance. And uh, the other one just uh, being that uh, the industry standard dimmers beyond the LED. Right. And third timing, lights go off after closing and mm -hmm. off until opening in the morning. Correct. Can we make that into a motion, sir? I move that we approve the application as presented under the conditions that the existing canopy lighting be brought into compliance <coughs> and the proposed LED lighting have uh, standard dimmers. Uh, what's the phrase? Lights be um, turned off uh, no later than what was closing was at 11? 11? 11 11 15 make 11 15 and no earlier than 5 a.m. Let me see if I might uh, no later than 15 minutes after closing. Yeah, I was thinking the closing the same time though. could change. Right. I mean, if they start yes. closing yeah. earlier, then okay. we'd want Or if they start opening much. later, no, no, so no earlier much. than 15 minutes before opening, because that gives the owner more flexibility and they're not locked in forever to. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, so much. Second. Yes, very second. Any discussion? Everyone comfortable? Okay. So all in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, neighbors, for coming. We appreciate your input. Um, the third and last item on the agenda is the, the application for a special permit amendment of a ground sign by Design Workshop, Inc. at Lynn Manor, 349 Haydenville Road, Leeds, map ID 6-55. Tell us your name and address for the record. Hi, 
um, Deanna Crystal and Brian Hale from Design Workshop. We're the Indian Orchard Mills in Springfield. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And could you just tell us a little bit about the application or the amendments, I guess, that you're requesting? Yeah, we installed the original sign, which is, is relatively modest for the size of the facility about 12 years ago. And uh, the cuff that sign is 60 inches by 43 inches. It's a double-sided hand-carved sign with a gold leaf, a very attractive, modest sign. I think you all have pictures of it. And um, the <coughs> facility has added a whole, uh, another building, which is the uh, Linden Manor Assisted Living Community. And rather than adding another sign, <coughs> they would like to have a larger sign which combines the information from both facilities. Similar look, just right. adding a little bit of extra stuff. So we're going from a 60 inch by 43 inch sign to a 90 inch by 59 inch sign. Yes, or what we would like to do. How, how is this going to be lit? They have some lights on the ground. Ground light. Yeah. Here. It's back a bit from the road and up a little bit, so it's not really the lighting. I don't think it's any kind of an issue with the okay. traffic going by. Carolyn, no correspondence received by your office, objections, anything else? And you'd have essentially the same lighting that shows on this existing sign? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, I think they may move it back a little bit, I see. but pretty much the same spot. There's no residential anything around there, is there? Yeah. There is a house no, next door. Oh, there is? So you, in this picture, you can actually see a house on the abutting parcel right there? Yeah. There's a house with a fence, and I think there's a bus stop right, right there, right across from the sun. I think there was a bit of controversy when the big additional facility was first permitted. Right. But this is kind of a afterthought, I, I suppose, this sign adjustment. So will the lights go out at night? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to be on all night? Ambulances go there, I think, sometimes. Yeah, I think so. Probably, so should be allowed yeah. to be on all night. It should. It will be the same lighting that's been there for. Yeah, whatever it is. However many years. They, it might be on time. Light. We don't really don't know. We didn't put the lighting in. The customer did the lighting. I I don't have a problem with this. I'm just trying to figure out under the reading of the ordinance. How are we authorized to do this? And I'm sure we are, but because it's an amendment, is that why? It's an amendment, but also it's bigger. It's a bigger sign, so you, you there's something if there's something unique about the character of the building or its location relative to other buildings in the district that warrant a larger sign or um, you know different setbacks or different standards. It's, the language I think I put under the yeah, first three fifty dash seven point four dash three A. What what they're proposing in a way is that instead of putting up another sign right. for the new facility, that yeah. they combine both signs onto this one post just for yes. and and that's the part that right? you could argue yeah. is in the it's a, we figure it's the most efficient way to do it and the least less clutter. Yeah, the least annoying visually. It's going from approximately uh, was it five feet to less feet. than five Third. by four, which is less than 20 square feet, to <coughs> it's now approximately it's less than 40 square feet. Exactly. It'll be under yes. 40, yes. Yeah. So it's almost doubling in size, um, but the is the, the height off of the ground the same? No, it's, it's a little taller. Time. It'll be um, 90 inches to the top. And uh, the space underneath it? Uh, let's see. I think, it's, I think it's a little, I think it's pretty similar. I think it's just a little bit more. Nine foot above grade. Yeah. That's so to the 30 top inches of of, uh, underneath it is the space underneath yeah, it. Just enough to allow for snow not blocking it yeah. pretty much. <laughs> That's optimistic. Well, well, we're hoping, yeah. <laughs>
Hopefully they won't be plowing right by the sign, but who knows. Okay, and I, I'm seeing no one here from the public to uh, address this application. Um, any other questions from the board for the applicant? I have none. If not, a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, <laughs> Sarah, very <laughs> second. And then uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing, that's unanimous. And then uh, any, uh, mo does anybody want to pose a motion on the application? Um, I propose that uh, we approve a special permit for a ground sign at Linda Manor, 349 Haydenville Road, lead to map ID number 60.55. Um, except it's a special permit amendment. Yeah. It's actually an amendment, an amendment to an existing special, special permit. permit. Yes, okay. We approve the special permit amendment. I don't see that we need any conditions. So, Okay, a second on the motion. Second. second. And discussion? Okay. There's none. All in favor? So that's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We, we, okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, we do have two sets of minutes that we should vote on. <coughs> August 14th. Well, let's go in order. July 17th. That was the one with. Here for that one either. That was that's, that's no, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Good night. Um, 17 James Avenue, the ex expansion of the non conforming setback. Is that the minutes people name? Yes, sir. And then, and then maybe we can do them together the minutes from August 14th, and that was the uh, um, the business yeah. about the yeah, the propane the tank. Propane. Yeah, oh, yeah, um, I should have read that. I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> We're still on record here. <laughs> so, are, but the, the issue is, are the a motion to approve the minutes for both of those from both of those hearings? I move we approve the minutes. Yeah. Second. Is there an issue with the minutes? No. Uh, second. Okay, because that's the, that's the only issue, right? Procedurally. <laughs> okay. So, Sarah seconds the approval of the minutes. All in favor of approving the minutes? That's unanimous. Um, and I guess we just mo move to adjourn and. So and then you're allowed to you're allowed to talk about things after the fact, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so motion to adjourn, seconded. Okay. Sarah, all in favor, unanimous. Know.